All right, people, we're back at it again with another back at it again. I'm down, television, podcast, studios, all whatever this, you want to call this, it, whatever you want to say. I like right. the studios idea. I like that. Yeah, I'm down. Well, one day, you know, one day, you know, it's, it's a, uh, a long journey that we're that we're in. All right. So no rush. <clears throat> no, exactly. No rush. But there is one announcement, right? Just to let everybody know, once you step into this, into this uh, world right now, this is a 100th I'm Down episode, right? Pretty dope. That's 100 episodes so far. We just passed our two-year mark. Um, and we're still deal, doing this, man. Cool. We're still out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? So, um, let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. Reckless Twitter of the Week. You got anything for me? Before we get into, I guess, more serious conversations? I haven't been on Twitter this week, actually. I, me, barely me either. And everybody's behaving, like, so well, bro. I think we're all bored now. Think so? Mm-hmm. But nobody... You know what it is, bro? Nobody is even tweeting, like dumb shit anymore mm. you know what i mean i think we're bored bro like but but i, I mean like like uh, not dumb shit let's go with complaining like nobody's really complaining anymore you know what i'm saying like before i would see like a lot of uh girls hating on god you know <laughs> again you can see vice versa you know what i'm saying like it, it, it was a lot of you know like back and forth stuff funny stuff but right now i don't really see yeah, anything we're popping calm up down well behaved everybody's chilling right now i, I don't know what's i guess good for society. everybody's at home good this, for i think it's good for society for sure I think that um, this definitely reconnected some people, like, you know, and definitely made uh, a lot of people that probably, like, you know, weren't mm-hmm. maybe, you know what I'm saying, talking yeah, a lot exactly. or whatever. Now it's like, you know what, bro, let's just, you know. Let's, let's make this right. Let's exactly. Make it, so, you know, you know, let's amend. Exactly. So, me personally, I don't got no record of the week, so I kind of just want to get, um, I want to get down a conversation. What do you want to do? You want to do topic or do questions first? Either, which one you got better? Which one are you more interested in? Okay, so, so the... I think I think the topic is not funny. It's more like uh, educative, I guess you could say, right? Educational. And educational. Educative is not a word. It's not. Are you sure? That doesn't sound right. At, who's your Alexa? I don't know. Who you have. Google? I have Alexa. Okay, ask her. Alexa. I don't know. Probably made that up, guys. What is educative? Yes. I don't know. Maybe I use it. It's the same it thing. It's the same, but I, I think in that maybe moment, it would have been, it right? yeah, been educational. Who knows? I, yo, listen, guys. I that throw, is like, that was educative. This educa- is educational. Look, I throw out big words all the time and confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody, nobody catches it. Me. Nobody, nobody catches me, bro. So I'm like, all right, cool. Know, nobody checks you, you're good. Exactly. All right, man. So, you know, let's, let's, let, let, let's get to the topic. Let's get to the topic, right? Okay. So, it's been two years, right? Um, We started... I was 23, you're 24, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, yeah, we're literally right next to each other. <laughs> so, yeah, I was 23, you're 24, for sure. You're about to be 26, I'm about to be 25. That's crazy, bro. We it old. still feels so young, Yeah, bro. we're old, though. You think so? I think so, bro. Nah, but I don't know why, but that's... Imp- and I, mean, I, mean, like, like, when I was I a mean, kid, yeah, but I like mean, now... Like, yeah, exactly, no, I mean, old, mean shit. I mean, old in the sense of, like, when I was younger, I thought this age was, like, having it all figured out. Right, right. But now, you know, it's like, nah, I feel like a little kid anyways. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like a little kid. Yeah, like you still feel like you're figuring it out. You're still finding yourself mm-hmm. as a person, right? Okay, so that's perfect segue into what I want to talk about, which is we're growing we're growing up, right? We're getting into our mid-20s. Mid-20s. I was going to say late 20s but not yet, right? Mid-20s, you start to learn lessons, right, about life, about everything, right? So right now for me, and I think that this, this, will, be, this will fit into like the I'm, you know, like mm-hmm. at the end we try to do like what's your I'm down moment. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just been reflection, a lot of reflection. You get me? And part of that just comes down to, we, we spoke about this, about unlearning mm-hmm. a lot of things. You get me? And so now I'm kind of like just looking at, okay, so why am I the way that I am, right? Like, I mean, that's a very like, I guess, Deep basic question. question it's a very but, philosophical question. Right, but why? But like, for example, you know, like, okay, we talk about this all the time, right? Like, I hate birthdays, right? Like, like for me, like, as far as, like, you throwing and making me, putting me in that mm-hmm. kind of spotlight, I don't necessarily like that. Um, but then I ask myself, why? Like, like, because, you know, I've asked, I've asked the question of why we celebrate birthdays, right? I've, I've said, you know, it doesn't really make sense mm-hmm. to me to some degree. Like, but then, you know, we talked about how, like, you know, us as people, us as humans, we just use days and use things just to celebrate and just any excuse to party, yeah, just, just any to excuse mark, to do things. Yeah, just to celebration for sure. Which makes perfect sense to me, right? But then, you know, like, I, as I start... I started on that question for myself. Mm-hmm. I kind of start to like decipher, like, like, or, or at least I'm trying to be on the track of like trying to understand like other things. Like, for example, like, like, why is it that I don't like hugs? Like, hugs physically make me feel weird. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. You, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. But not all the time. 
You know what I'm saying? Like there, there is moments where I can hug somebody, right? Let's say you like feel a, like it's contextual. No, let's say an, I'll, I'll put it in the clean version, right? So let's say in a more intimate setting, right? I don't mind hugging somebody in a more intimate setting, right? Like I don't feel uncomfortable, but say I have to say like hi to a, to a girl, right? And say the girl just wants to hug, like she's a hugger. I don't really like doing that kind of hug. So if I want to clap you up, you know, for guys like the dap up, yeah. bam, you know what I'm saying? Like the quick. But I don't know, it's just, it's just little things like that make me think, why? You get me? And I think a lot of it just has to do with how I how I was raised, how mm-hmm. I grew up. You get yeah. me? Those, th- those little things I question because, like, do I need to unlearn those things? And why do I need to unlearn those things? Or why should I try to do unlearn Do you consider them things? bad? Is that that's just it? Is that I don't... The way I look at life, I think, and mm-hmm. the scope for me might not be bad, but I guess in general, is it bad for society, right? Like, um... But I'll put it to you like this. There's this um, there's this quote, right? Mm-hmm. I forgot the guy's name now. His name is like George Shaw or something like that. Like, but uh, essentially, he he has two quotes, right? One, he says, "There is the only way to," and I'm paraphrasing for sure. I'm a, I'm gonna murder this. He basically says the only way for change to happen, or, or what is it? It's, it's like I got the quote, but let me just read the quote because <laughs> I got it somewhere in here. Let me not. I don't got to well, butcher this. this delicious aside, bro. Yes, sir. Acai, anai, acai, acai. There you go. Okay, acai. so the quote's from George Bernard Shaw, right? So the first one is, progress is impossible without change. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't want to just say that and let that shit just skip over somebody's ear, right? Like, listen to that real quick, right? So progress is impossible. Like, in other words, for you to get to that next level, you need to change, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's what the quote is saying, right? And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything, right? So, you know, we talk a lot about on I'm down, right? About we want to implement change and we want to cause change, mm-hmm. right? But that change always needs to start with us. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And no matter how good we think we are, right? How 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 much we progress in life, because we definitely progress mm-hmm. in life a lot, you get me? We still need to stop and, and kind of think about where we are, you get me? And what we're doing mm-hmm. and how we impact other people, not just o- outside of the podcast, you get what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, it's very easy to step into the podcast, right? talk some real shit say some real shit but then practice and put and implement that mm-hmm. so much in your life that you start to impact those around you without ever having to have the conversation sure, they just yeah. see like oh shit like this per- you get what I'm like for example right like like one thing i'm spending a lot more time with your brother now right and one of the things i've seen about him is like i've analyzed is that damn like he like we've been talking about this eddie has a huge heart you get me? Mm-hmm. The biggest heart, right? Yeah. Out of like out, out, out of out of all of us. For sure. But it's a difference now knowing that and then really seeing, seeing it in action. Through, like I'm yeah. seeing him, you know, talk to like people he grew up with, people a little bit younger, mm-hmm. and then really putting them on game. Like and really like like trying to like, you know, cause that change. But that change like is is, is also from those people looking at him and h- how he moves and stuff. You get me? It's how you get those ears up. You know, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Those things impact. Get me? Because they impact me because he hasn't had that conversation with me. I'm just looking at him and I'm like, damn, bro, like you really out here. Like, like whether you know it or not, bro, you really impacting and making a change. And we haven't even had this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for me is I don't necessarily know everything that I do that might be negative out into Mm -hmm. somebody. You know what I mean? So that's why, like, I I wouldn't know if it's bad if I don't hug or if it's bad that I don't like birthdays Mm -hmm. or it's bad that I don't like certain intimacy things like i don't you know you know what i mean like i wouldn't know that so that's kind of the question i have so as you grow older and you're becoming a man a woman whatever how do you think you kind of decipher those things like what is it that you think will be like damn this is what i kind of need to change or this is what i need to unlearn i I think a lot of that comes in the context of relationships like and not just uh romantic ones but especially those yeah uh for example I'm not big on birthdays either. I think it's just like a whatever thing. Yeah. Uh, but we were just celebrating my dad's birthday on Monday. Yeah. Right. He's not big on birthdays either. Yeah. But he gets mad when we're not. Like, he gets mad that we made a, a party for him. Mm-hmm. But then he gets mad when we don't want a party for us. Oh, right. Gotcha. And I think that uh, a lot of times is like that. First of all, that's ironic and hypocritical, right? Yeah. Let's be honest. Uh, but it's also a reflection of, you know, He's a giver in the sense of like he doesn't express it in words as much as he does in actions. Yeah. So he for when he celebrates other people's birthday, he wants to give them the best because yeah. he wants to say, "Hey, I think you deserve the best." Without saying, "I think you deserve the best," gotcha. right? So, um, is it that bad that that's how he is? 
maybe, but it, uh, we also know that you know different upbringings re- produce different results. Right. And so a lot of times it's contextual. Um, I think though it is important to understand that uh, progress always happens when somebody sits down and asks, "Is there a better way to do this?" Right. Right. Like uh, whether whatever small or big thing we do, however we express ourselves, however we see life, we have to sit down and say, "Is there a better way to do this?" Mm-hmm. Right. Because if there's not a better way, then there's no reason for progress. Right. But if there, there is, there'll be no reason for you to even yeah, try. Because yeah, because what's the point? It's not going to get better than this. Yeah. Right. But if there is a better way, if there is a better solution, mm-hmm. then I think we owe it to ourselves to ask, you know, yeah. what does that look like? And and I think in a sense of, of self-realization, it, I have to have an idea of who I want to be yeah. to say, how can I more effectively get there first? Mm. Because maybe yeah. I'll get there eventually, yeah, yeah. but I could get there first faster yeah. if i really reflected on all those weak points that i'm like okay this needs to change that needs to change yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe this i'm okay with but i could do better in this area or that area whatever that case because if i don't sit down and ponder on those things then i can't really say you know i need to change these things right and i can't see myself becoming a better ex right right, right. well you know but e- even in that saying though like um you st- uh, so for one i think that there's an importance in having um, observational people in your life. Mm-hmm. You have people that really do observe, right? Because those are the people that point out things in your life. You mm-hmm. know I mean? There's people that you have in your life that they just go with the flow. They won't tell you nothing. Yeah. Like, whatever you do, okay, whatever, that's just how he is. There's other people that will be like, yo, bro, go I ain't checking. gonna lie. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you get me? I don't think you should be in those things make you aware, like, okay, mm-hmm. well, maybe I do need to change these things. You get me? Because yeah. uh, I'll give you an example for me, right? So, lately, I've been experiencing, um, not, not experiencing, but I guess more tone like owned in on like um like let's say love right let's talk about love for a minute right and i've kind of been owning in on love a little bit just because um so this idea of love right like what well, whatever it may be it's always present mm-hmm. we know that it's it's god so it's good all these things right so let's let, let's say someone with like my mentality right because you're already in the mentality and you're very more mature in the sense that you know you want to get married well, you know I, you want to do know about it, mature, it, you know, <laughs> no for sure i mean but yeah, think about, it, look, think about it. We always talk about it, right? You're 25 right now, about to be 26. If you were single, what would you be doing? And uh, you say you wouldn't be chasing. I wouldn't girls. be doing what? nothing. That's what I'm trying to say, though. Like, so that there's an approach, there's an approach that you're or an angle that you're coming with because of what you know. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Other people, right? They might. So other people might be like, nah, man, I don't need love. Fuck all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, like, yeah, there yeah. is different mentality. Mm-hmm. So the question is, why do we think like that? Like, so, for example, w- one simple thing is what's good, what's bad, right? So, we know, like, on, on relationships, is it can only go one of two ways. It can go either happily ever after or it can go really bad, right? Mm-hmm. It, essentially, right? Yeah. Now, we know that, that it's, in between it's extremes. There is, we, do, yeah. we, we understand it's, yeah, yeah. it's in extremes. In between, there's stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, but overall, what I'm trying to get at is that, like, you're either going to get with somebody and you're going to go through all the obstacles together, right? Because that's just mm-hmm. what it is, mm-hmm. life at the end of the day, right? And with the intimate partner, is just even worse. That's all, all it really is. Like, it becomes more. You know what I mean? Because yeah, now you got to hold it's on. It's accentuated, for Exactly. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you have an obligation, especially when you're married. Like, mm-hmm. if you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, okay, that don't matter. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about, like, like unless you're trying to build, still, yeah. it, to a degree, it still doesn't matter. Because, for example, like, if you break up with your partner right now, okay, you just broke up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but it's divorce is another That's layer. Yeah, I like get when what you're you saying. get to the divorce yeah. part, you know, you, you like you might as well just try to fight the hurdles and get over the hurdles together. Mm-hmm. Then to like, yo, let's just break this off right now. You know what I mean? Because it's just way less complicated. It's way less emotional stuff. Yeah. So once you differentiate what's good, what's bad, whatever side you want to be on, why though? You get me? Like, why to you is it unappealing? for the other side you get me mm-hmm. and that's what i mean by do we need to start unlearning some things because we know that our parents they have trauma you get me like our parents came up a certain kind of way mm-hmm. right and for them to teach the, their kids better now i will say this most parents i think do better than what their parents did for the most part yeah. but that doesn't mean that they still didn't carry the traumas and still passed it down yeah, for sure. some way for some sure. form you know what i mean so like for example like whoopings right whoopings nowadays are looked at as bro the worst thing ever right like if you whoop your kid bro you're going to jail right? well that's what i intend to do so right but i'm, I'm saying like in general though, but if you whoop your kid in walmart you're going to jail oh yeah for sure like, that's what i'm trying to get at you yeah. know I mean like back in the day but that was normal. nobody's gonna blink that's what eye. i'm saying like, that's normal it's like oh you, you, you whooping your kids okay that's normal you know what i mean but this is the thing though do you whoop your kids because you're angry or you whoop your kids because you're trying to show them discipline that's the difference that I'm trying to differentiate. Like, like, what side do you stand on? Because you might, because both of them might cause the same thing, right? They, mo- they both might lead to discipline. Like, they both might lead to, like, mm-hmm. okay, he's not going to do that again. 
But realistically, your intention that we talk about is this what the root, is what is the root cause of this? Exactly. So for example, if you go whip your kid, right, and you go beat the shit out of him, like really bad, was that really discipline, or did you just get out of hand? Did was you that just abuse? Get angry? Yeah. Or if you came, took the bell out, spanked them, three, whatever, you know, however you want to do. You know, you, you kind of, like, gauge yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. And, again, everybody's going to have a different mm-hmm. opinion on that because somebody might be like, bro, you whipped your kid once. That's already bad. You know what I mean? They might look at that as a horrible, bad thing. But I think we kind of get where, mm-hmm. at least we're coming from. You know what I mean? So, as, as I was saying, owning in on that stuff, though, like, for me, I'm, I'm starting to realize that I think I'm just very, like, oversensitive to love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'll explain this. So, growing up, right? I was not um, given a whole lot. Of, maybe I was given affection. When I was a baby. I'm talking about growing up. Mm-hmm. I, I can remember. I wasn't given a whole lot of affection, right? My parents were there present, like uh, physically always. Yeah, I mean, like my mom showed up as a mom, as a caretaker, always cooking food, all this type of stuff. You know, give you a hug, mm-hmm. all this stuff, right? You know, you know. So with my dad, my dad's there physically. Mm-hmm. He was never there emotionally, right? So for me, I'm like, okay. So this starts. This starts to make a little bit more sense for me now because. So let's say I'm talking to a girl, right? And let's say I'm actually vibing with the girl, right? I and, and I'm talking about me in the past, because this has happened to me in the past so much. Let's say I start talking to a girl, I automatically think it's something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is something here now. You get me? Now, in the adult world, when you're dating, what do you do? You just, hey, eh, trying to see what's up. You mm-hmm. get me? Yeah, we had a good time this day. Okay, we had a good chemistry, time that day. Whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, you gauge it on though. It's like, okay, you know, we've been talking for mm-hmm. like a month now. We've seen each other. You know, we're cool. Me, back in the day, it was almost immediate because now I'm, I'm starting to get affection from the girl. I'm like, oh, damn, like I never got affection before, so this so kind of feels good. It's like a good. craving. Exactly. So you kind of now in me, you're, you're putting something within me that allows me to kind of ignore everything else. You, know? like, you mm. might be giving a bunch of red flags. You might be like, nah, I'm not really a serious relationship kind of girl. I'm not. You might be saying all of these <laughs> things subconsciously, but, but because, for me yeah. back then, like, and this is me back mm. then, I didn't. I'm not, I'm not paying attention to this thing. I'm paying attention to how you're just making me feel. You're yeah. making me feel like this. So now I'm cover. I'm using you to own in on, on mm-hmm. what I was missing my whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and that's something that now I know I need to unlearn. How do I do? I have no clue. And that's a process that I got to figure out myself and grow myself mm-hmm. with my friends, whatever. You get me? But I'm just saying that's just one observation I've made. You know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. one of those things. I was like, damn, like. Thinking about that, that makes a lot of sense. You get me? Like it, and it, it, it's it's an example that I, you know, you could put across a, a coast. Mm-hmm. But I think it's something mm-hmm. that a lot of people kind of identify with because even girls, like right, you know, sh- like you always hear like a stripper or like this girl, that girl, she has daddy issues. Daddy issues, yeah. And it's always that man mm-hmm. that comes in and gives you that love that you were always yeah, missing. Yeah, he gives you a sense of value you never got from a, a father figure, right? Exactly. It, it's, it's almost like how we talk about money, right? We talk about how, like, yo, when you get money, like, when you finally are financially free, right, and stable, you can now focus on other aspects of your mm-hmm. life, right? You can focus yeah. on other growths of your life. You can. You get me? Because you're no longer, like, stressing about, oh, I got to go the work and get this money. Whatever, exactly. Yeah. You know, you can now, you can mm-hmm. stand for something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can fight for something. You can be something more. You know what I mean? Than just a worker. Trying to get by. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's the same thing with the girl. Like, if the girl or myself or someone who's in the same place, if... You don't get to a point where you can deal with that issue, then you're always going to be. That's gonna be more than enough for you. I mean, like, like just having a guy that that guy might treat you like shit. He might not really mm-hmm. ride for you like mm-hmm. that. Might be somebody out there way better for you, but you will never get there yeah. because you didn't deal with the first problem that you should have dealt with in the first place. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? And that's that's just learned behavior. That's programming. You yeah. came up. You don't realize these things. You have it within you. And now you're old. You start to realize some things. Now you get to a place where you got to try to fix them. And yeah. that's that's um. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, sir. no. I, I think uh, I think you're hitting it like right on the head. Um, I do think there's there's this idea where a lot of times we excuse ourselves, saying that's just how things are, or that's just yeah. how I am. Yeah. Um, uh, because we don't want to label certain things. Like for example, you know, someone who has father issues, right, or parental issues. Mm-hmm. You know, they have abandonment issues, so they'll settle for a bad, abusive relationship yeah. as long as they don't leave. Because, yeah, you know, the yeah. fear of dad left me or mom left yeah, me, right? Uh, exactly. Or, or someone who's never really received the uh, affirmation is just looking for anybody to tell them, you know, they're beautiful or mm-hmm. they're handsome or whatever. Yeah. You know, thinking that whether that's money or success or whatever is going to mm-hmm. bring, you know, those compliments they never received, right? And so I, I would say, I think we all need therapy. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I think, um, and I think a lot of times has to be, you know, maybe there is a profession of you can afford a profession, that'll be awesome. Yeah. But if not, you know, if friendships around seeing people uh, model the life you want, you yeah. know, or, or the 
And I, and I don't mean the material. I mean more in in the personality, in the mm-hmm. charisma, in the confidence, yeah, yeah. in in the uh, relational and mental health, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, seeing that model that of somebody who came out of similar things is often the encouragement we need, right? Yeah. Like you know. Uh, you can see somebody who came out of the uh, the hood and and they broke in home and whatever and have a fulfilled marriage. Yeah. You know, you can see a, a father who didn't have a father. You can see a mother who didn't have a mother. Right. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be perfect because I think a lot of things we do carry. And until we don't examine why we do what we do in every area. Right. Yeah. We're going to keep carrying it. Yeah. But there is uh, that progress where, you know, I'm not going to be who I saw who the x and y is you know i could be them because that would be the easy way out yeah but i'm gonna have the mental fortitude to say you know i'm gonna shift my future and the future right, of right. the generations to come yeah and i think that that that's what marks someone with with uh a certain you know desire to just be different right mm-hmm. those are the kind of people that we say oh you know those are world changers those are influential people yeah, yeah, yeah. people who don't conform to the ways of the world or mm-hmm. anybody else they they choose a better path right and, and go ahead i'm sorry no. not to cut you off okay but even you saying that is perfect because the quote I just read, the follow up quote to that is, um, and it goes somewhere along the lines of like, men, y- uh, is reasonable men adapt themselves to the world. Mm-hmm. Unreasonable men adapt the world to them. Mm-hmm. And because of that is why everyone else needs to wait on the unreasonable man for the world to change. Mm-hmm. You get me? Because otherwise we'll all be in the same circle, cycle, in the same yeah. cycle. And one thing that reminded me about that was I, I was just reading Eclas- e- Ecclesiastes. Okay, so that's in the Bible. Yeah. That's where you honed it down for me, right? So I literally, I opened up the Bible because I'm trying to like find, um, I know you, I wrote some things for me and I was trying to go back to them again. So I opened up the Bible and I'm like, you know what? Let me actually read this. So first question I have for you is who is the teacher in Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes? Who is Solomon. Cons- Solomon, is, Solomon is, is considered, considered author, right? the wisest man to ever lived. Gotcha. Okay. And that, that okay. So that makes sense to me now. So, you know, as I'm reading, um, there's a in 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 you know it's a very short book so in there there's a lot of fool and there's a lot of chasing the wind mm-hmm. right analogies and yeah, stuff yeah. like that of some sorts and i'm reading this and i'm like man what he's saying makes so much sense though because like we're talking right now about personal growth right we're talking about how we've grown mm-hmm. we've matured and we've made each other's lives better we can make other people's mm-hmm. lives better all these things but then he says something important he's like you know at the end of the day it doesn't even matter because there's stuff that's happened in the past that you don't even remember anymore mm-hmm. and you won't remember you get me and there's things that you're doing now that people in the future won't remember or something al- along yeah, those lines yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm paraphrasing again and that's what i got from it. i'm thinking fuck like like you know we've had this conversation before because it's one of those conversations that's really like it's hard to have because you think like okay it's true though right like no matter what happens you could be rich, you can be poor, you can be middle class, you can be tall, you can be short, you can be swole. Fat. It doesn't matter. You, Both people end up dead anyways because mm-hmm. that's yeah, inevitable. Yeah. He says wise people should think about death more than their, li- their else, living. Yeah. Right? Which, which is the same way... Uh, um this guy, uh, think about your funeral more than your Gary birthday. V, Gary right, v. like think about yeah. the people coming to your funeral. Exactly. So all of these things touch base with me. I'm thinking, damn, like, so the personal growth part is is just that, like, make it your own personal growth because you need to live your life anyways. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like, you yeah. have this life here, right? You know God gave it to you. You know it's good. You know what I mean? So you got to live your life mm-hmm. anyways. But you do have to have that thing in the back of your head to understand that, yo, do the best that you can, right? To live the best life that you can, right? Praise God. Mm-hmm. Do what you need to do. But then I really do think like, wow, we really can't stress too much things out because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Like, yo, whatever you're mad at, bro. Like, you know, like it ain't even that big of a deal. Exactly. Like, yo, you know, if you're mad at somebody, let's say you're mad at somebody and you both got beef, but you guys used to be cool and that person passes away or something like that, but you won't even care about the, the fact beef. that you'll the beef, forget about you it. You won't yeah. give a shit about mm-hmm. that no more. You get me? It could be over twenty dollars. You be like, bro, I don't care about twenty dollars. I just want that person back. You get what I'm saying? Like, so that that's been in my head this week. Um, it's an early week. It's only mm-hmm. Wednesday. But it's still been in my head this week thinking about it. I'm like, damn, like, yes, I want to get better. And I want to earn, learn things mm-hmm. because I'm still going to live yeah. life. You mm-hmm. get me? But then another part of me is like, fuck, dude. Like, yo, you could get rich. Even, even says it, bro. Like, um, 
It says something along the lines of like uh, the wealth of the of the sinners ends up being in the hands of the, others because the they don't get to enjoy it. Exactly yeah, because yeah. and then another thing that got me that got me thinking was like it's so true when you're the when you're the first person in your family to try and build wealth you will carry all the burdens and that's something that a lot of people aren't prepared for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, and there's something I never really thought about because it's true because you will work hard and you will age and in order for you to accumulate wealth and get you know you might get it early like some people have or you might get it later in life you get me but the point is that you're the one carrying the burden the whole time anyways Mm -hmm. you get me and the people who don't carry the burden are going to be your family your kids but the reason why you want a family and kids is because if you're someone who's going to accumulate wealth why would you want that wealth to go to the government Mm -hmm. or to go to like random people or something like that you want that to stay within some type of circle where your legacy can still live invest in your own people and exactly like your own people the people that you love Mm -hmm. can can at least take this because then that makes you feel a little bit better about carrying all the burdens you get me like you don't want to carry all the burden that's like working your whole life for free basically Mm -hmm. you get me it's basically what it it comes down to and in the same uh in that same uh, chapter he also says you know is like that's why and and this is basically the hood version of it. So that's why you should stop stressing. You yeah. know, love God, love people, eat good food, drink good, good wine, food. peace out. <laughs> like it. you know, yeah. because he's like, uh, what if you get rich and then you die? Somebody else is gonna know you're rich. You killed yourself, you labored and you never enjoyed one moment of your whole life. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh at the end, you know, what is what's the point of it all, right? Yeah, yeah. Except being a good person and living a good life. And, and I think that we can all be good people, but we can also all be better people, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, the whole idea is you're never done until it's done, until life ends. Right, until like you're... Like, every day you can choose to make a better decision. Like, yesterday right. you screwed up, or a couple hours you screwed up. Yeah. Um, now, you get that redemption moment. You get yeah. that reflection moment. You get to look back and say, that's not who I am. This is who I am. And I want my character to be visible in my actions, right? And and I think that, that it's important that we keep that mindset of, you know, when I die, what are people going to say about me? Yeah. Right? Or yeah. Beca- and I'm not saying in the sense of, like, uh, the facade or the appearances. I mean, like, did I really make an impact in the people around me? Like, did I leave an, an impactful dent? Yeah. Right? Were they better off because they met me? Yeah. Um, and if not, then that's the moments that we have to think about. Because those are the moments that are really going to matter. You know, your money, somebody else is going to spend it. Yeah. Your name, unless you're like 1% of all of world's history, which is what, what literally what Solomon says. He's like, most of us don't remember anybody who passed or will come. I mean, you know? Bro, you, just said, you just said Solomon was the wisest man, right? Mm-hmm. One of the richest. Yeah. But bro, most people probably don't, don't even know, even know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. And so historically, you look him up, he was rich. Man. Yeah. He was literally known as the crazy. I mean, like his whole temple was built out of gold and, yeah. you know, craziness. I, I, I remember one of the things he said, I I went out and I tried to find, I think he said, peace without God. Right. I think that was, mm-hmm. his, that was, that was his words. Right. And he said, you know, I, I got homes. I got concubines, meaning girls. Right. Like, he, in other words, I'm going to hood it up for you. But he basically said, I got a bunch of cribs. I got a bunch of whips. I mean, back in the day, they didn't have cars, but whatever they used. You get me? The golden chariots. Literally, golden, golden chariots. Golden chariots, right. Like, so horses, I'm yeah. guessing, probably the best horses yeah. ever. Right. Ferrari horses, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Um, he had girls, right? And uh, and you're saying hoes, whatever you want to yeah. say. He had know? over a thousand women. Yeah, like he just <laughs> got over with, a thousand I mean? women. So you think about that's like, damn. So, and he realized, like, even then, bro, it it's like, it vanity. Ha- it's yeah. like, who cares? Yeah, yeah like it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, so it, it again, man. It, it's it's such a thing about. Uh, it's a good way t- it, for me reading now is a good way to reflect on life because it showed me two things. You get me? Like you said, it shows you. Um, that you shouldn't stress. Just like the little Duval mm-hmm. song, I ain't stress <laughs> and I ain't stress. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But in the other, in the other, I mean, like you said, you know, am I making an impact? Am I, I think a good point of view would also be to start looking at other people. Mm-hmm. Like for example, um, most people that have exes don't talk to each other, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I wasted my time. This, that, the third, blah, blah, right? See, the problem is, you didn't waste your time. You got experience from that. Mm-hmm. And even though you and that person ended bad, you learned something from that person. That person impacted your life because now you're not going to move the same ever yeah, again yeah. after that. You know I mean? At like, least after, now you know what you don't want. <laughs> look, and even if you've never been in a relationship, then you can't really, like, identify that. Look at friendships. You get me? Like, 
you may have a friend and you might see a, a personality trait in that friend that you just don't like and you hate and now you just say you go off and you guys n are never friends again whatever you now know that every time you meet somebody with similar personality traits you're probably not gonna hit it off mm -hmm. you know what i mean that person taught you something you know what i'm saying it taught you to for one save your time because this is very important and this is so true we talk a lot about i don't like wasting my time i don't want to waste my time blah blah whatever right but bro let's 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 keep it a book right Unless you're like, oh, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know who, who's, a, unless you're like a Kevin Hart, right? Which is probably like the busiest guy mm -hmm. that I was here, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, realistically, you probably watch Netflix. You get me? You probably go on Instagram yeah. X amount of hours a day. You get me? Like, I, I think that we complain about time a little bit too much. You get me? I think that we listen to like these super successful, super busy mm -hmm. people, and we try to kind of like, I don't got time yeah. for that. I don't got, it's like, bro, come on, bro, you got time for that. You <laughs> get me? Like, don't act like they wasted your time because they didn't, because yeah. you did learn something. So. You know, we talk about life being all about perspective, but I think that I'm down in general, like what it, what, what it first meant to us, right? Mm -hmm. And it still is, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that's that's the whole thing about this is that, you know, I feel like we started I'm down because um, we wanted to do something, first of all, you get me? Like regardless, because uh, I guess this will be considered a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. Until we start getting paid, right? Which is coming. It's guys. coming. I have faith. I have For faith. sure. But... It's something that to me is still like, bro, like I hear, like when I get feedback from people, right? Like people are like directly like DM me or something like that. It makes me think like, damn, bro, like it's it's like you're right there, like to the finish line. Just because like, you gotta think about how many billions of people are in this world, right? And if a small group of people, even if it's one person, you know, in our case, a little group of people, yeah. but even if it's just one person that tells you, Bro, I think you're funny. I think you guys are so funny. I think you guys have a good idea. You guys just need to do, you know, like people get feedback, right? Like, oh, you guys, you know, you guys should try to change this, that, and the third with, with editing mm -hmm. because of how people are used to consuming yeah. content. I understand that. But the fact that people like the content, you get mm -hmm. me? Like what you get out yeah. of that tells me, bro, like there's more people just like you all over the world. You get me? We just haven't reached those people. Yeah, yeah. Or the right video hasn't touched mm -hmm. those people. The right clip but it's mm -hmm. only a matter of time. And I think about these things like, damn. So this is exactly why you just continue to live your life. It, it, look, I was reading today in that same book because um, it even talks about investing, right? So it's yeah. funny because there's one part in there that says, you know, um, you. it starts off something basically like, yo, if you send, I think it was like flowers or seeds like across the sea, just wait and you'll get a return, right? In other words, to make it, you know, more careful for you, like for that Florida, right? Now Florida's probably one of the biggest exporters of mm -hmm. oranges all around the world, right? It's like in here, in your land, where you at, you sell oranges and you give them out and that's how you make your profit. But it also says to diversify, to be smart, mm -hmm. yada, 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 right? Because it, in that case, it, like if a harvest didn't work, you don't lose the rest exactly. of your stuff. But it also says, yo, it, 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 and again, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, yo, do more than one thing because mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to work. What's going to produce the you fruit don't know that what, year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're doing I'm down, we're doing I'm down and it's a hobby, right? Your parents probably see it as a hobby. <laughs> People probably like, oh, you know, that's a show they yeah. do. Some people really fuck with it. Some people are like, bro, like, I like that you do not keep doing that. Whatever your your thing is. But the thing is that it's so true. You just don't know. Because mm -hmm. something that is a hobby could be something that produces. Exactly. You know, for yeah. your life. You just don't know. And you just got to keep doing that thing, you know. Like, uh, we always talk about passion and, and being, you know, driven. I think, you know, now that we reflect on 100 episodes, I'm down. It's essential that we remember that. What we're saying is just, I'm down means do something yeah. you know whatever that what something is exactly um you know don't just do 40 hours of a job you don't like don't just yeah. uh be mediocre there's enough of mediocre lives out here uh -huh. you know live your life yes. you know uh, at least in my sense i always i always tell you guys you no know, i come from a spiritual background so i do believe that every life is purposeful and every life matters yeah. and i think that we are all here in this moment in history for a specific reason mm -hmm. so if i'm right right if i'm right that means that there's something that only you could do mm -hmm. that there's so there's a person only you could be mm -hmm. you know there's a blessing only you could bring forth yeah. and why throw that away yeah. and maybe people need you to be the next spokesperson or the next podcaster or the next yeah. artist or maybe someone just needs you to be the next mom yeah. the next dad yeah. you know the next hardworking 40 hour construction worker whatever you gotta do but somebody needs you out there yeah. to be you that's all we're saying. Be I'm down, be you. And that's that's a perfect, I think that's a perfect way to wrap this topic up because, um, again, f if you're tuning in, if you even stayed this far, we appreciate you and we, we got real love for you because that means a lot for, you know, for you to, I don't know how long it's been, 100 and, what's that, 103 seconds? I don't know how long it's been. But, 
But point is that you know, if you stay this long, you kind of see the journey. About 30 you get minutes. me? About thirty minutes. Okay, you you get to see the journey firsthand. You get me? Mm-hmm. I wish that you know, we can have almost like this. I don't want to say a hundred percent of our life documented, yeah. but a good portion. Yeah. So you can relate a little mm-hmm. bit more to how it's stuck, cause, cause like you know, a lot of people they jump on Instagram, whatever. Oh, I'm just a regular person, but I did this. I'm just a regular person, I did that. Yeah, you know I mean, and we get it, but you hear that so much that it just becomes like, all right, man, cool, got you. Mm. You're a regular guy, now you're a millionaire. You're a regular guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I hear, I'm kind of sick and tired of hearing those already at this yeah, point. Yeah. Like, I go on YouTube and it's like. Yo, man, you know, I'm a regular guy, just like you, whatever, you know. But I was I working made, this job, but now I made a million dollars last year. Exactly. And it's like, okay, we get it. You get me? But I, I guess in, in this sense is whatever you decide to do, though, do it because you like to do mm-hmm. that stuff. You get me? Like, like if don't don't try to be a YouTuber. You know what I mean? Like, don't, like, I want to be a YouTuber. Like, I don't know what that means. You know, like, like now if you tell me, like, oh, I want to have a, a, a cool cooking show on YouTube. Okay, there. Now we're talking. You get me? Because mm-hmm. you saying you're a YouTuber is like, uh, you want to be a YouTuber? Is like, I want to be a rapper. It's like, yeah. you, to me, automatically it clicks off to like, okay, so what, you just want the lifestyle that comes with mm-hmm. it? Or like, are you looking, you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of the people that have made it is almost like, uh, it's not accidental, but it's, they didn't expect to it was organic. be exactly. It just happened because they had passion yeah. and they loved mm-hmm. it. Obviously, strategic to a degree. Mm-hmm. But even Drake said it. Drake said when he dropped God's Plan, like it wasn't that strategic. Like he said it. He's like he was gonna give God's Plan to Trippy Red, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Trippy Red's are, are, yeah. I have no clue what his songs are, but he was originally gonna give that song mm-hmm. to Trippy Red. And he ended up just like it was a leak of yeah, it. Yeah, and he, he just dropped it. And that's it. And, and he, then he realized how big it blew up, so he added biggest, it to the album. Exactly. Yeah. First of all, his biggest song in his career, right? With like over a billion streams, like and super fast. Like it within wasn't a year. meant to be in the album. Yes. Yeah, it, it wasn't even a song it was meant to be, exactly. He just it was like one of those like throwaways, mm-hmm. but it just became one of the yeah. biggest songs that slapped. And that that just happens because you're in there doing what you enjoy doing anyways. Mm-hmm. He's in there making music. That's what he's doing. You get me? Yeah. Like Drake is a superstar. He's a co producer, executive producer, um, you know, in his bag with liquor, with everything. You know, that that's who you see, the superstar. But all of that happened. Cause he just liked yeah. music at mm-hmm. first. Yeah, I mean, initially he just loved music. Yeah, it was an organic development into the rapper we now know. Exactly. Yeah. Like we, we just look at it as a, this end mm-hmm. result. But you gotta understand, that. like even even you know, at this part I've watched that uh, rap radar interview maybe three four times already, right? To really get so mm-hmm. only on what he's saying because he even he even there's a part where he's like, yo, I I just feel like I'm living my life just yeah, now, just now, just now. Think about that. Like he's been hustling for so many years. He's like, yo, you know, I'm in this house basically by myself, you know, like, like for the most part. And he's like, I, f- you know, I just, he even said, he was talking about a girl, right? He was talking about like how that girl would have to fit into like his lifestyle mm-hmm. and would, and it would have to, she would have to become like a part of him. Like, like I can't function that well without that person being here, you know? Yeah. Because his dynamic is so drastically different. And, and, and also because you don't even want to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I can finally just chill for yeah. a little bit. You know I mean? Just enjoy this a little bit more. You know I mean? He's like, you know, I, I still need a glass of wine mm-hmm. by sundown. You know, I, I still want to like, you know, vibe with my friends here and, and do X, Y, and Z. And, cool but you gotta understand like people just looking at it from the outside like yo you gotta pay attention to what he's saying he just said that he's just now starting to try i'm sure you've seen drake at yeah. parties all this stuff but he's but just for him to now really just, like, like soaking it all exactly. in exactly yeah. because you know, again that happens to us a lot we're grinding 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 and we finally put our heads up and we're like damn we don't got this far like you know what i mean so um again man like we said i'm down it's just that like like you said you know it's just do what you're passionate about do what you love do something mm-hmm. you get me because you are needed somewhere yeah. you know what i mean so again um let's answer some questions and let's wrap this up because you know unfortunately yeah we're good on time i do got some questions though, from ig so mm-hmm. i'm gonna shoot them to you and then you tell me so we got about three all right let's start with fatima right fatima said she two questions right she said what what have you been doing to keep sane during quarantine Okay, so that, uh, it's two questions. All right, so let's go. Let's go with that one. I'm playing hella cards, bro. Hella cards? So <laughs> many card games, like, nonstop. Every day, though. That's oh, what you no, do every day? Not, not every day. Every day. Uh, well, what's your root, your daily routine, then? Is like, that, uh, uh, like, Cause it is my routine shifts yeah, weekly. Because I work from home one week and I work from the office yeah, the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think really I, I have the perfect dynamic. Yeah, like yeah. when I'm Like, when I'm fed up with home, I go back to the office. Yeah. When I'm like, yo, I don't want to be in the office, I'm coming back home. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of my extracurriculars have all had to stop due to obviously um, the fact that social gathering is not acceptable. Of course. So I don't really have as many, you know, like functions and dynamics as I yeah, used to. Yeah, yeah. 
So it just feels like one big, big break, like for me. So gotcha. I, I wasn't like I'm not really going crazy because yeah. I used to. I used to tell yeah. you I'm like yeah. I used to, now I just feel like you know the only thing that's suffering is my sleep schedule and my gym schedule. But aside from that, you're, you're I'm like on vacation. <laughs> I mean, I would say for me, it's been finding the routine that I'm now in. So. So I'm so into the routine I'm into now that I actually don't want quarantine to end. You get me? Because mm. it's like I, I feel good in it. You now. got used to it. So my my routine is wake up late sometimes. So I've been waking up a little bit later than usual, right? Because you know I have my alarm stuff like seven thirty. Mm. Since I wake up like at eight thirty at nine, whatever you know. But essentially, I wake up, I stay in my boxers, I don't take a shower, bro, for hours. I'm just in my computer, you know, get get to work type stuff, right? Um, later on in the day, I just I work out with Luna. Like we're working out with Luna, bro. So that's like what I'm looking forward to. Like one mm-hmm. of the biggest things I'm looking forward to to try to get like my body out of. Because think about, it, I've been sitting on my couch. Mm-hmm. I've been not really that. Trying mobile. to get out of the funk. Exactly. So you know, we, we go we go out there get get that going, and then we usually go pick out some food or something like that and just chill. You get me? That that's been like the the routine mm-hmm. lately. You get me? And it's for me, it's been good. You get me? Mm-hmm. On the weekends, you know, I probably slide over here. I've been sliding over here, you know, a few mm-hmm. times here and there. Like you know, it's, it it, it kind of varies. But um, I feel like at this point, though, right, and the question being asked at this point now is, man, I'm going to be honest with you, quarantine is almost over. You get me? Realistically, the only thing is that businesses aren't mm. open officially. But, bro, there's, like, a lot of, bro, there's a place that I know of that, like, you can go and get drinks and oh, just yeah? chill out there. You can get a drink and just chill. You better like, not say that name out here because nah, they're going to get blocked. I'm not, not going to say the name for sure, but that, that's what I'm saying. I know of a place, you know? Mm. And you could just chill. You Hit get, a Jorge, he has the plug. <laughs> you, you can get a drink and just chill, you know. And that that and that place is pretty. I'm gonna say it's packed, but you know, there's a good amount of people for the amount of space there is in the place. So it's pretty good. You get mm-hmm. me? So, uh, you know, for me, it's just finding a routine. I think that's mm-hmm. it. But realistically, man, this is about to be done. You get me? Like, like as far I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like on the 15th, I think it's a wrap. I think everybody will open mm-hmm. up normally. I know, um, a uh, Diviero. Because again, Florida's been open for a long yeah. time. It's Miami Day that's still on mm-hmm. lockdown. You get me? But I know that Diviero somewhere in Florida's already open dining in, like people could dine in type that's stuff. Crazy. So, I mean, bro, I don't, I don't think by 15, you know, it'll get pushed. But I guess that's been my, my routine, right? Second question is What will you never take for granted after everything is back to normal? That's a good question. Uh, family time. I think I'm spending mm. way more time with the family now. Than in recent memory and yep. like obviously by default, yeah. But it's just become like integral to the part that I don't think I want to go out of my house as much as I thought I would at first. Yeah. You get me now? I'm like, I'm just gonna chill with my my parents. You know, Fatima, you guys. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Like, yeah, chilling. Yeah, like yeah. I don't have to go outside. I'm not wasting any money. I'm uh-huh. chilling in here, bro. Yeah. Um, I think family time for sure. I you know I don't. I kind of agree with you, though. I, I don't know about family time. You know, you're definitely a lot closer to your family. But you, you mean in general. I yeah, know you yeah. mean in general. But um, I, I think for me, man, is exactly what you said, though. I don't think I... You know, for me, I go through phases in my life, right? And it's, I guess, like a curse. Part of it is just um, being into looks, I guess. Like, just aesthetic stuff for me. So, like, though, I go into pockets of, like, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy a car. So I start looking, right? <laughs> cars. Bam, 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 bam. I'll be like, all right, I think I'm gonna pull the trigger on this. You get me? And I'm like, I'll be ready to do it. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. You know what? Let me chill. Mm-hmm. Let me get back to focusing. And I think that this quarantine, dude, I haven't looked at nothing in a minute. You get me? I haven't cared about clothes. I haven't cared about nothing. Because it's almost like, I mean, look, for me, I've been new clothes was pointless. You get me? Mm-hmm. Like, for sure. I mean, I like clothes, you know, fashion style, the shoes, love shoes, all that stuff, right? But you know, when you're in times like this, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, and that does the thing. It just gives you real perspective on what matters. Like, people. Yeah. Spending time with people mm-hmm. matters. You get what I'm saying? Because imagine if you were in quarantine, a real quarantine, though. This has been bullshit quarantine. Yeah. I mean, I'm, like, imagine if they say, yo, you can't leave your house. Like, you leave your house and we see you in a car outside, you're getting arrested. Like, the only time you should be in a car, like, well, we're opening the supermarkets from this time to this mm-hmm. time. You know what I mean? You have X amount of time to be in there. Do what you gotta do and get out. And get out. You know I me? Mean? Like, like, and this is your area for supermarket, right? They, I, I don't know, man. But you know, like, they haven't done nothing that drastic. But you know, when you pay attention, it's like, yeah, man, you gotta appreciate the people. You know I me? Mean? Cause, bro, you just it, it just could have gone left mm-hmm. real bad. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, it did go left. Don't right? It's pretty bad. It, it went pretty bad. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like what sixty something yeah, thousand yeah. people. But I don't think you mean the virus. I think you mean the quarantine, right? The quarantine. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I mean. Like, you know, it's it's in general. You get know I me? Mean? So, 
I think I think for me, well, I, I would agree it would be the the people that you love, mm-hmm. the people you consider family, like that. Yeah, definitely don't ever take those people again yeah. for granted. Give them try to like you know maneuver time because Get you some really more face to face time. Yeah, because you really don't know. Because this was really like one, you know, th- this is a sketchy thing. This whole coronavirus mm-hmm. is sketchy in the sense of like there's a lot of conspiracies about yeah. it. There's there's that who knows, and we probably will never know, right? But the point is like, what if something real really yeah, did happen? Yeah, yeah like, something for mm-hmm. real. Like you know, I'm hearing these killer bumblebees, all this stuff, whatever. <laughs> Like the thing is huge, world. yeah. Like I mean, I don't know, but the point is that yes, like I, I would say that's one of those things that I will not take for granted. Family, so I, I, I agree with you. Let's see, this guy said being being honest. Okay, so being honest, scared of Rona. Uh, me personally, no, I'm not scared of Corona. I, I never was scared of Corona to begin with. Um, I was not one of those people. That's like, oh, I'm gonna wear gloves, and I'm, I'm not that person. The only time I even wear a mask because I have to be like, because I walk in the store, somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm really not. And I don't want to say, like, I don't care and sound all insensitive, but that's kind of the truth, though. Like, I really didn't care like yeah. that. I mean, like, like I, I, if you know, you're a person like, yo, stay away from me. I respect. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to be next to you and trying to, you get me? Like, but I was still kind of, you know, adapting to this, mm-hmm. but still living my life. Man. Yeah. I was, I'm still going out, you know, I'm not partying or going to a bar or something like that. You know, the one thing I miss, my guy, is seeing the bistro so fucking bad. I mean, wow. Like, I'm talking about, I miss <laughs> it so bad, bro. Like, I'm like, man, I be thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, I still haven't watched 007. I still haven't watched the Black Widow movie. Like, I mean, bro, like, I, I really, that's probably the only thing I miss. Yeah. But as far as Rona goes, like coronavirus, uh, me personally, no. I haven't seen, I haven't even seen or met or know of anyone who has it. I just know, like, like I, a friend tells me that, oh, yeah, his friend got it. Okay, cool. But, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I haven't yeah, yeah. heard, for me, I don't know. I'm not. No, yeah, I mean, uh, I've heard obviously in different people that we know as uh, like family or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I'm not, a, not psh, honestly. I, I don't. There's few things I'm really, really afraid of, and a virus yeah. isn't one of them. Um, I do find it funny that now I keep a mask in my car, yeah. just just cause, and it's becoming like a new normal. Like I don't even think about it. The moment I'm getting out of my car anywhere but my house, yeah. I grab it. Yeah, which so is yeah. strange. It's like it's becoming a pa- a part of my garment of my wear. Uh, I, th- I think that's what's going to happen right after everything opens. Yeah, yeah. You go to a restaurant, oh, you got to at least have your mask on. You know, they might yeah. do little things like that because I yeah. think people are still going to be, or mm-hmm. maybe not the restaurants, maybe the people might be like, yeah. yo, you know, I'm still going to wear my mask. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, do one of these. Yeah. Like, I, I don't no, know. No, and I'm telling you, like, the dynamic has changed. For example, uh, you know, when I'm doing face ID to pay at different places, right? Yeah. It doesn't read my face because of the mask. Gotcha. So I'll look around and I'll take it off just for the face ID. Obviously, yeah. then nobody's going to tell me nothing. Yeah, yeah, but it's kind of like, uh, I don't want people to judge me. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? No, I can't. <laughs> it's like, you know, look at <laughs> him, look at him. <laughs> He's taking <laughs> off his mask. Other. He's taking off his mask. Gotcha. You don't want that, nah, like, nah. look. Nah. That it's, 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 it's just weird. The dynamic has changed. The other day, I swiped my car because my face ID wasn't working, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I swiped my car, and two seconds after I swiped my car, some guy came with a Clorox wipe and cleaned the the the, the ATM the thing, right? Yeah. The pin pad. Uh, I thought that was amazing. I was yeah. like, why aren't we like this all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, every five seconds, I'm seeing people clean carts and clean the yeah. the. Ba- yeah, I'm like, I could live in this world, yeah. actually. You know, besides the fact that people are dying, and obviously yeah. that's the major part. The fact that we are now socially responsible conscious of each other Mm -hmm. and we are clean like that's my dream come true it's like all the things that we should have been doing in the first place anyways it's it's very true like i mean uh, probably besides the social distancing part but everything else about being clean i ain't gonna lie i don't really like that many people so i have no problem with right but i mean but you know practice i mean you still go to the beach you still go on the roller coaster you still go to disney world you're being aligned like yeah Yeah, of course you know what i mean like like you're not thinking like oh i gotta gotta, like be distance distance yeah so that's what i'm saying as far um as far as the social distancing goes eh, but like you said, as far as the cleaning and being like more hygienic, and yeah, bro. I mean, those are things that we should be. The doing workers, anyways. man, at Target and Publix, that's where only where I go. You guys are my heroes. Yeah, you guys are on point. Yeah, I've seen them clean the car. Yo, like they're not the playing no games, yeah. bro. I respect them. Yeah, and yeah, it, it, sh- it should be one of those things yeah. for sure. But all right, man. I hope that answers your question, Bido. Um, this one is: How has this journey been for you and Chris from Karen? All right. I mean, we kind of talked a little bit about it, but I guess you know, you know, you could. Uh, I, I think it's um I think it's been a learning experience. Um, it's been about adaptability. Um, you guys know we we change backgrounds every so often. We yep. we adjust. Uh, we've learned a lot more about technology. We learned for a lot sure. more about each other. Um, I I think for me specifically, I've learned a lot more to listen. You know, to try to keep because you were a, a train of thought kind of guy. Like you have to, if you have a thought, no matter how long it is, you you gotta yeah, go gotta through, go it. through it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm learning a lot to just listening and seeing. Okay. 
all right, he said this, he means this, I think. And then yeah. I'm listening in, I'm trying to take in as much as you can so then I can give you an actual response yeah, yeah. and not just be like, let me interject, let me interject. Yeah, so yeah. I definitely think it's challenged me to be a better listener uh, and to learn to process your your thought process, you know, because you think very rapidly. You're like... Yeah, it just happens. And so I speak very rapidly and I think very rapidly, but not in the same concept because mine are just broken thoughts. Like, oh, this, 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 and this. Yours are like... I'm single focused on this one thing yeah. today, you know? Yeah, the, the, the thing is that sometimes, and that, that, that's a funny, and that's a good observation actually, because that's so true. That does happen to me a lot. Like, I, like, because for me, the thing is that I think about things and I kind of put it in the back, right? And then I, I bring it right back out. I think about it again, put mm-hmm. it in the back, right? And it kind of like goes on. There's days where I'll think about something all the way through. Mm-hmm. There's days where I'll think about something and I'll ask a question to a friend to kind of get their input. And then there's just days where I'm randomly, like you say something and it just like, like it's like, all this information I've been processing and keeping in, it's just like, okay, let me let this all out. Because boom, boom, boom. Especially when we're talking about like certain, you know, yeah, when we yeah. get to like the girl topic and something yeah, like that. I, I, topic. Yeah, yeah, I start popping off because like there's just things I see and I observe that just don't make sense to me. Like, yeah. you, t- <laughs> and I'll say it all the time. I'll be like, bro, like you saying this literally makes no yeah. sense because X, Y. Yeah. You get me? So, yeah, um, you're yeah, absolutely right. And I, I agree with you. I think, uh, besides all the things that we've spoken about and what you just said, especially uh, with technology, though, like, for me, I find that I, I personally, I just hate editing, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not that I hate doing the act. I just, I'm not as informed and I'm not as, like, like, I guess, in the game mm. as I should be. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not as, like, I want to learn how to do yeah, this yeah. so bad. You get what I'm saying? And that's the kind of my problem. Like, for me, like, for me to really be into something, I have to be into it. You mm-hmm. get me? Like, really, like, into it. And, and that's how I learn it. You get me? So, uh, for me, one thing I, I think I'll learn is that, that I have learned is that I probably need to be paying more attention to even those little things that I don't necessarily want to do right now or, like, we don't necessarily are good at right now. But it's better to get better at it now. And then, you know, later on, down yeah. the line, if you still feel the same way and you can, you just pay somebody exactly, to do that for you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's it, it's everything is a learning curve. I think, like, you know, that, that goes to business. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you might start a business... And like you said, man, like um, if you start a business by yourself or with a partner, you first of all, you need to understand your partner and you guys need to be on the same mm-hmm. train of thought. That's number one. And then number two, there's going to be things that you don't necessarily like to do. You get me? Like you might start, a, or, I don't know, some type of creative business and you love the creative part, but you might not like the... Administration, e- logistics. Exactly. Part, yeah. You might not like that part, but for the meantime, it's best that you learn everything mm-hmm. about it. You get, you yep. get what I'm saying? That you're in there, that you, because that, that's how you empathize for one. That's how you understand. That's how you get better at anything anyway. That's get how you could get a better input because you can bring an idea or a view that nobody else can see. Exactly. But if you don't know how it works, you can't comment on it exactly so yeah definitely makes you more versatile more impactful i think those are all things we're learning like to yeah. be more versatile all right yeah for sure yeah that, that, and that's all you're trying to you know like we say taste right like yeah. tasty thing that gary v says all the time and that's something that like I, i'll tweet from time to time also because you, sh- you do need to taste and that's that's another thing i've learned is bro you need to taste because if, look for me personally bro i don't like i always say this and i say i don't care if we don't ever get paid, and I don't mean to say that as a dismissive, like I really don't care because I will hope we get paid. But I say that so you could kind of understand that like we've been doing this for two years now and we've got zero dollars. You get what I'm saying? Like zero dollars, we're not popping, or none of that stuff, right? As far as like, you know, what mm. you will consider to be, you know what I mean? Like, like I heard this thing uh, not that long ago, like in LA, right? If you don't have at least a million followers, you're a nobody. Which <laughs> makes me think like, bro, like we really are relating. Like we're really getting to that point now. Uh, mm. We're not getting. We've gotten to that point yeah. now where like You're not if not somebody checks, enough. if yeah. somebody checks your Instagram, there and you have less than a minute, it's like oh, okay, I'm not really paying attention. Yeah. It's like bro, really? You know what I mean? So th- that that's why I say those kind of things because I want to emphasize on passion and mm-hmm. I want to emphasize on like what you love to do. You get me? Like do what you like to do. Sure. And if something good comes out of that, like something like money wise comes out of that, dope. You get me? But at the end of the day, it won't be like a loss. Because now, like, a job is different, right? Because a job, you don't necessarily love and... Oh. But you love the income or you Ex- need the income. Exactly. You know, so that's that, that that's basically where it comes down to. Um, That's the last question, man. Guys, um, thank you. Yes. Uh, so, once again, if you're watching this, uh, we appreciate you. If you thought what we said was dumb, if you thought what we said was 
unimpressionable. If you thought what we, if you thought how we looked in this episode was bunny, because we don't got hair? haircuts. What's wrong with my hair? Well, we both bro. don't got haircuts. Okay. What's wrong with my hair though? Well, you got a hoodie, so yeah, all right. Take the hoodie off. No. Show the people. I think I did it at first. At did the beginning you? Of that video. Oh, you probably but yeah. now, I'll take the hoodie off. No. Now they're gonna go back. No, no. Yeah, there we go. There, that, that's it. You're too late. <laughs> like Charlemagne. Charlemagne didn't want to be showing like his half ball thing. It's okay, Chris. Yeah, we see you now. It's rough out here, bro, guys. <laughs> but if you watch this and you thought that this was great, this was funny, this was intuitive, this was uh, knowledgeable, this was uh, educational. <laughs> educative, bro. <wasn't> <laughs> uh, no, ed- educative, no, or something no, like that. <laughs> then you're both in the right place. Just like, subscribe, share this if you felt something, and give us your feedback. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Till next time, this is Adam. Peace.